Hi everybody. Today I'm going to show you how I did the background on this image from my finished pictures video this month. And this lady is from Coloring Heaven Strangeling Special by Jasmine Becky Griffiths. And I thought because when I put this one up on Instagram I was asked how I actually did the background. So I thought maybe a little kind of video tutorial would be good so you guys could actually see what I did. And what it involves is basically cutting out the whole of the background because there was actually a drawn background in there with I think a river and some greenery in the sky, all that kind of stuff, a little landscape basically. And I didn't feel like colouring it. I'm not much of a one for colouring scenery. So I just cut out all of the background and I placed it with a page from my book. You can see there that's from um, I think that's the AA touring guide that one uh, a book with loads of pictures of Britain in it and I used that page because I thought the colours were lovely and I ended up matching the colour palette of my lady to the background that I had already picked out which is probably the best way to go about this to actually have the picture in mind and then adjust your um, colouring to actually go with the picture of the background that you're planning to use but today I've actually made life a little bit more difficult for myself I will show you that now. Um, the picture I've decided to show you today to actually use this technique on to show you how to do it is also from Jasmine Becky Griffiths. And it's from Jasmine Becky Griffiths colouring book, Fantasy Art Adventure. The lady I've chosen to colour to show you this technique is Captain Molly Morgan. If anybody has this book, they'll know probably the picture I'm talking about, this picture here. And you see there, I've already coloured my little pirate there. And I actually coloured her <laughs> before I picked out a picture for the background, just to make life a little bit more difficult for myself. But I've just coloured her really quickly with a marker base. You can actually see right now a marker base. I've coloured her with the marker base and pencil shading just to have a picture to do this little demonstration from. So first of all, I thought maybe I could explain how to go about choosing a picture to use this kind of technique on. And I've picked out a few examples in this book that we could maybe use this technique on. And ideally what you need is a, a pretty large frame a blank space around the edge of your picture, either actually drawn in as it is here. You can see we've actually got a frame drawn in here that's pretty wide and the wider the better because then you have more room to actually stick your background picture onto. But yeah, you need a pretty wide frame and your main character or the subject in the picture, the bit that you're actually going to be colouring, needs to be attached to the frame because we're going to cut out all of the background and we need this to be one piece if you get what I'm saying um, we need her to be attached to the frame somehow either on the bottom or from the side and we need the main image to be a fairly simple shape along the outside because we're going to be cutting this out with an exacto knife or a scalpel, craft knife, whatever, one of those. We're going to be cutting that out around the outside. So we need it to be fairly simple. We could sacrifice maybe the, a few strands of hair or something along those lines that you don't mind actually sacrificing. And speaking of the sacrificing, it's best if you do this with a single sided book. You can see this is a single sided book. We've just got text on the back, but we're going to actually be cutting out all of this page and sticking something else behind. So yeah, a single sided book, definitely better unless there's something on the back that you don't mind sacrificing. Um, uh, much the same as using markers. If you really don't mind the picture on the back being ruined, then yeah, go ahead and use your markers or go ahead and use this technique, whatever you like. And I've picked out a couple other examples just from this book to show you. First of all, I'll show you the, the page in the front there, this one. This was another contender for one that I would maybe have coloured in. But I thought, um, even though her body and all the, these bits down here are pretty simple shapes, when it comes to her hair, there is a lot of kind of fiddly bits around the outside. And yeah, I could cut, just snip them off and sacrifice those, just leave off those little flyaway curls we've got around the outside but yeah I just thought I'd try and keep things really simple and go for one that has really simple shapes but apart from that this one also a very good contender because we do have the frame around the outside and our character is attached to the frame at the bottom there so we're not actually cutting the character away from the frame that would be a whole different technique to do that um, using this technique we actually leave the page in the book and we just cover the background you could if there was a character, a central character in the middle, you could cut that out and then stick it back onto the background once you're done. But if we're leaving the whole page in the book like this, then yeah, a, a frame around the edge, that's what you're needing. I did pick out a couple other examples. 
this one here would be an example because she is a fairly kind of basic shape around the outside there and this as well I thought might show that it doesn't have to be a background of scenery that you that you would use to stick on behind it so yeah that is another example of a picture that you could use and I do have another a little bit further ahead I think yeah this one here again we have the frame around there and our character is attached to the frame and just to make things a little bit different I did pick out another book that has some examples that we could use for this technique just having a little quick scope through my books I picked out this one that has another couple of pictures just for other examples that you could maybe use for this technique to show you it doesn't have to be Jasmine Becky Griffith you could use something like this one which has really pretty simple shapes around the outside you would maybe be losing a couple of strands of hair there but I think yeah we could kind of cope with that and then we could put our background in behind here and this lady at first glance you'd think yes yeah, she would be quite good for actually using this technique as well but this earring here fairly fiddly and we do have several shapes that seem to be actually detached from the image there so yeah that one not so good this one we could probably get away with I'm thinking that one maybe some sort of a 60s maybe theme pattern would be great in the background there looking at it but yeah those are examples of pictures that you could use and I found another one in here as well yeah there we go this lady here we do have the frame around the outside this time we're, we're rectangular again pretty big frame there and this book is double-sided but we have artwork on the back of there Ooh, get in frame yeah we have artwork on the back of there which I wouldn't I wouldn't mind um, sacrificing to actually color the picture in but yeah that lady there we could easily cut around that background fairly simple shapes with this big hat and we could have a nice background to put in in the background there so just add a few examples I seem to have picked out another one here oh yeah this one this one also would be quite a good one does that one have artwork on the back yep that one also has the artwork on the back so if you're not too fussed about actually keeping that artwork then this one this one also um, would work for the background kind of technique because we have a frame a fairly thick frame around the outside there and uh, our lady has fairly simple shapes and she is attached to the frame which is kind of important which you'll see when we go on to actually cutting out our lady so there you go just a few examples of pictures that you could actually do this with it does seem to work really well with Jasmine Beckett Griffith because her colouring books do have that frame around the outside, which is pretty important. So we actually have our picture in here, we have our picture chosen, we have our picture coloured in. There we go, there's our picture. As I said, I made life a little bit more difficult for myself today by actually colouring in this lady before I'd picked out my background picture. It is a lot better to pick out your background picture first if you want to use this kind of technique because then you know what colour scheme you've got going on with the background and you can adjust the colours of your main character to actually match in with the background. But I have been through a few books that I found downstairs and I've picked out a few from this book in particular. Seems to have a lot of pictures that might work as a background for this lady. So I'll show you this book. This is The British Isles of symphony in colour <laughs> this is a really big book I'm thinking this one probably was a charity shop buy as well I'll just get rid of our colouring there to get her out of the way and I'll show you the pictures that I've picked out to actually be using this is a pretty old book as well so the pictures should be pretty matte yeah definitely a shadow <laughs> definitely a charity shop buy look we have the three pound there I went through this book earlier on and I picked out a few that I thought might match in with our pirate lady this is the first one here so there we go and any picture from any book magazine whatever you want could be put in as a background as long as the actual page is big enough um, to actually cover the whole of the background that you want to be replacing so I thought maybe this one could be my first kind of choice as maybe being a background for that image as I said I'll try and keep it kind of the same she was standing on a beach with the sea in the background and we do have beach on the other side as well but we do have a lot of little people there and I'd rather not put any more people into the picture so just a plain landscape like that would be good and this book is an old book so not quite so glossy as some of the ones you get um, the more modern ones so that's quite a good picture one of the ones that I've picked out to maybe be a possibility I'm going to mark all these <laughs> um, this one is another one and this one here I thought could be a possibility um, with these cliffs and the ocean there that's all on camera there we go another one 
another one was this one this one's pretty kind of softer colored kind of more monotone maybe more monochrome rather with a little lighthouse there that i thought was a bit fun which might fit in with our little pirate there so yep that's another possibility i picked that one down here yeah this one and i thought maybe these docks and the, this kind of colour scheme would work quite well with our little pirate lady. And yeah, we do have some people there, but I really like the colour scheme of this one with our pirate lady. And as I said, I, I didn't really match the colour scheme to the picture because I wasn't really thinking of it at the time. I just coloured her however I wanted to. I thought I'd find a picture later, which has made things a little bit more difficult. So I would recommend yeah picking the picture first. But the colour scheme on this one I thought worked really well. Maybe the docks would kind of go in with the the boating kind of theme I thought with the pirates I do have a couple more picked out in here I did pick out this one and this is to show <laughs> that that would have been lovely if it was actually big enough so this is just to show that you do have to make sure that your picture is big enough to go behind your image and that one yeah that would have been lovely if that was actually big enough but we can clearly see there our frame of the picture there it's a lot a lot bigger than the actual image so yeah that one even though it is a gorgeous image and i would love to put it in the background for our little pirate yeah it's too small unfortunately it may work for another image at some point but yeah that one is too small and did i pick out another one oh this one which has a little bit of a coastline in it but i think that one's mainly trees so yeah a bit on the fence about that one and i did find another image in another book this one, another charity shop book. Get the other one out of the way. This one's another charity shop book. Again, three pounds, I think this one was. And I did find a really lovely beach in this one. That picture of the beach there. I really love these colours. I'm not sure exactly how well those will go with our lady, but those are the pictures that I have picked out. And of course, it don't have to be travel books that you use. Any kind of book with pictures big enough to go into your background doesn't even have to be landscapes, could be interiors, could be a townscape, could be anything really. I do have one here. This is one I picked out as a possibility for the first mermaid that I showed you. And this is actually a book about watercolour painting. Um, and I thought that image there would be lovely in the back of the mermaid. In the end, I ended up picking out a different one. But yeah, you can see there, this one is a, from a book about watercolour painting. It's called The Half Hour Painter or something like that. But I'm not exactly sure where I put it. <laughs> I checked downstairs in my container of textbooks and I didn't actually put it back in there. So I'm not entirely sure where I put the book. But it's called The Half Hour Painter. And that's um, a page from there. So yeah, uh, any kind of book with pages with scenes or interiors or whatever big enough to actually go behind a colouring book page is something that you could maybe use so yeah there we go these few that I've picked out here I'm going to go ahead and take them out of the book so I have them all together and I can choose which one I like actually as a background a little bit later on so I'm going to go ahead and uh, take these out of the book now Alrighty, I've taken all those pictures out of the books. Now I've got them over to the side. So I've got my selection of backgrounds to choose from. So what we need to do now is cut out our character here, making sure she stays attached to that frame. But what I'm going to do first, because it might be a little bit difficult once I've actually cut the lady out, is to go around this frame with a gold sharpie just to neaten off a few of those edges. I've been a little bit messy at the bottom there, so I'm just going to neaten off that frame with the gold sharpie. So of course this bit totally optional you don't need to do this at all and just as a quick note as well while i am actually going around with the sharpie there the ruler is a metal ruler a little bit mucky but yeah a metal ruler and that's best to have if you're going to be cutting along there with the craft knife the exacto knife if you're going to be using anything any kind of ruler for cutting out it's best to have a metal ruler because the if the craft knife slips as you're cutting it will cut into your plastic ruler and end up wrecking it so yeah stick with a metal ruler so now I've neatened up that frame there, which is entirely optional. 
and of course the picture you can colour however you want to colour the picture that doesn't interfere with the background at all any kind of way you want to colour that picture although if you do, do use a water medium and the paper buckles it might be a little bit harder to stick down and make flat so I would suggest sticking to the dry mediums I've used the alcohol markers and the pencils there um, a couple of little stick on crystals which wouldn't really make a lot of difference either way so yeah what we have to do now so we take our cutting mat and we slip that underneath between this page and the ones behind the ones we need to protect and we need to cut out all this uncolored background here so as i said you need a very steady hand and we're just going to go around all this empty space here cut out all all the outside that we want to be replaced by the background This paper is kind of thicker than the colouring heaven, so I might take a couple of passes with the knife there just to make sure all the lines are all joined up. I'm again not getting any kind of tears in the corners. There we go. As this is quite thick paper, I am pressing pretty hard with this knife here just to make sure I am getting clean cuts all the way through the paper because we don't want the little tears on the corners where, where our cuts don't exactly meet. It's best to do, if you have any little bits on the inside of the image, you'll see that I've cut out these little bits on the inside, if I'm on camera, these little bits on the inside of the image. It's easier to cut those out first because if you go around the outside of the whole, the whole of our lady here and then try and cut out these bits in the middle, it gets a little bit difficult with, the, with this image moving around. You may need to turn your book to be able to get the best angle to cut out the picture. trying to do this fairly quickly but the more care you can take with it the better and it is a pretty nerve-wracking thing to be doing actually chopping into your coloring books like this but yeah the effect you get at the end is way worth it I think Like with marker basing, this isn't the most exciting thing to be watching. So, so I'm going to cut out all of this background and I'll probably catch up with you when I'm done. Unless I think of anything else to tell you along the way. Just gotten this little fiddly bit done here. You can see that I've forgotten to colour her hair tie. So let's give that a little bit of colour. We do seem to have a red marker lying on the table here. So I'll just fill that in with the red since it's part of our colour scheme. If I remember to shade that, I remember, but if not, at least it's got a bit of colour now. Now we've finished all those little bits actually in the middle. I'm going around the outside and here you can see this is why we need a picture that has without any fiddly edges. We do have a little bit of a fiddly bit there with her ponytail, but I think I can get around that. We can work with that. It's not too bad. Oops. Tying a little bit on the inside there that I've forgotten. Shouldn't be such a problem now. It's a tiny, weeny little bit. All right, there we go. I've gone around all the outside edge of our actual lady there, Captain Molly, and she is completely separate from her background now, apart from this one edge, which is still attached to the frame and that we want to leave that. We need her to still be attached to that frame at the bottom. We want to remove all of this in the background but we want her to still be attached to this frame, which is why when you're choosing the picture, pick her picture where your character is so, sort of somehow, in some way, along an edge or at the top or the side, attached to your frame. And that is quite important because what we're gonna do now is get rid of all of this in the background. So we're gonna take the ruler now. We can get ourselves lined up so you can see what I'm doing. Take our ruler now. And we're going to score or cut along the edge of this frame, just leaving our lady and the frame edge of the paper. Again, pressing quite hard because we do want to actually cut through that paper. 
Here we see there, we are cutting along the edge of that frame, just leaving our lady attached to the bottom edge of the frame itself. It is very thick paper, but yeah, now we just have the lady attached to the bottom edge of the frame itself there. We've got our lady attached to the page and we're going to go along each of these edges and completely remove all of that background. All that we want to be left of the page is the frame around the outside and our actually coloured in character in the middle. There we are, our lady is all cut out now and my edge has gone a little bit wobbly along there so I'm just going to slip a piece of scrap paper, this is watercolour paper, I'm going to slip that watercolour paper inside there and just touch up this edge with the gold sharpie where my line cutting wasn't the straightest. It's kind of hard to do the edges that are on the inside of the book because you can't quite get your cutting mat right in between there. So that edge of the frame is going to be a little bit wobbly, but I think I can live with it. So now, so now we can decide which of these backgrounds that we picked out is actually going to be the one that we use. We do have a good selection here. And just slipping behind, we can see how we think those would work out. That one actually looks really good. I wasn't sure if that one might be a little bit too bright, but I'm really liking that one actually. So yeah, that's our first choice. We have a few more. And even though I've taken them all out of the book, they will probably come in handy for other colouring, so I'm not too, not too bothered that they are all cut out and not being used. We have this one, maybe a little bit dull, I think that one, a bit too plain along this kind of part of the picture. I do like the little lighthouse, I think that fits in quite nicely, but yeah, I think it's a bit too plain around that top edge there, so I think that one will probably be a no. We have this one. Again, yeah, I quite like that one. I like this curve of the coastline here. That's really nice. We do have kind of interest going along here with the rocks and the kind of mossy cliffs. I like the blue. The blue comes in with our colour scheme here. So that one, yeah, that one is a possible, I think. So we have two possibles right now. We have two possibles, so I'm just going to lay those there for now so I know which ones will work. We have this one. Oh, this is going to be a tough choice. That one also. Not terrible. We do have that line across the top, which is... I am not really leaning towards that one completely, but still that one would work. So I think we're going to be narrowing this down to a choice of three. And either of those, any of those would work. This is the one I was leaning towards before I cut them out. And yeah, that, that, that does work. The people are kind of putting me off that one. And the fact it's actually more of a lake than actually being the sea. That would be the reason I don't choose that one. And we do have three to choose from already. So yeah, I'm going to put that to the side and maybe use that again. The last one that I cut out was this one, which is the one with the trees and the little coastline there. That gives a more of a kind of mysterious sort of vibe going on. That works a lot better than I thought it would, to be honest with you. So I think it, we do have actually four to choose from. We have this one. We have that one. We have this one. Oh, tough choice. Or oh, this one. I think I prefer that one to that one. I think those colours may be a little bit bright, so we are narrowing this down. I do like that one. I think that one matches in with our colour scheme quite nicely, considering that we didn't actually match a picture to our colour scheme. We've done pretty well. 
I think it really it's coming down to that one or that one, both of which would work. I'm going to have to be really ruthless here. Mm. I like the brighter ones. That's sort of what I get drawn towards mostly. And I think I'm down to these two. That one with the trees could do, could maybe go with a kind of spookier picture. But we're down to this one. This one. Okay, I think I've made a decision. Sorry for anyone whose favourite was any of the other ones. Those will be used on other colourings most likely or other collages. I think I'm going to go for this one because it looks as if she's standing among these rocks here on the shoreline and we have a lot more of the sea kind of coming on along that side. So I think I'm going to go for this one here. So the next step will be actually gluing our collage and sticking our lady actually into her background there. Okay, now it's time to stick our lady, actually stick her down onto her background. So how we do that, we take some scrap paper. This is watercolour paper from our watercolour pad, but obviously scrap paper, it doesn't really matter when, which, when, why, what kind of paper you use. And we flip her over and we're going to glue as much of this kind of area here as is possible. It might be a little difficult to get down into the actual spine of the book there. I'm going to try, especially along the edges, because we want the edges to be sticking down. And this is just a normal normal glue stick, nothing special with that. I'm just going to glue along the edges of this frame here. Actually having to stand up to do this, I don't know if I'm getting in the way or not, but I'm gluing all along the edges of the frame. And you can definitely see now why it's important that our lady that we've coloured in needs to be attached somehow to this frame along the edge here because that's what we're going to be gluing now trying to get all the little fiddly bits so we can make sure she's completely stuck down onto her background especially around the edges we want her to be stuck then we add our picture in We pop our picture in there, hopefully. This is all showing on camera. <laughs> you can all see what's going on. We put our picture in the back there and we flip our lady back over. Making sure we, trying to make sure we get this straight. <laughs> As I said, that page, that little um, frame around the edge where it goes into the spine of the book, that is the most difficult to be sticking. I think we've kind of got her where we want her there. And to make sure she's stuck down, what I usually do is place another piece of paper, scrap paper over the top, and just press down quite lightly just to make sure that she is sticking down along those edges. stick on crystals making life slightly more difficult but I think considering that we did considering that we did pick our background after we'd actually colored the image maybe slightly wonky there but I am trying to do this pretty quickly on camera so you can all have a quick kind of overview of how I do it after another look when she's all stuck down I did realize that this white of the wave here was blending into her top a little bit, uh, maybe not quite the perfect choice for picture. Maybe I should have gone with one of the others, but hey, it, it is what it is now. So what I did was I went along the outside of her of her top here, just with the black biro, just to give a little bit of an outline along the outside of her top. It's not perfect, but at least it looks a little bit different now. So now that we've stuck her down, all that's left is to trim off the edges. And usually I do that with just with the scissors. And you just trim off the edges of this picture. along the edge of your page. There we go, she's all trimmed off now. And yeah, I am, 
I'm pretty happy with that picture as a background. The only slight downside, as I said, I didn't realise that this white would be interfering with the white of her top, but I think I can live with it because the colours of the picture and the actual scene, the background there, works really well with our little pirate. So yeah, hopefully that has explained the technique of how I coloured the other picture, which I will just bring in so we can see them both side by side. Hopefully I've got them both on camera there. This one does tend to glare a lot because she's done with metallic watercolour. But you can see there the technique is exactly the same. I just cut out around the edge of our image, stuck her down onto the page as a background there. And again a picture with the character actually attached to the bottom frame there. And the more that they're attached to the frame, like that is quite a big kind of part there where she is attached to the frame the better because there's less chance of it ripping and it does make it slightly easier to cut around. This one as you can see I've added in a few kind of wayward strands of hair kind of drawn in over the background because her hair is this kind of white pearly kind of watercolour and I drew in some strands over the background with the white pen just to try and attach her to the background a little bit more you know make it look as if she is a part of the picture and you could do that could do that with this one. I only have my black biro around at the moment, but a few wayward strands of hair, maybe drawn on, to make her look as if she is part of the background, like so, just for example. A few little blowing strands of hair. If her hair was a lighter colour, you would use a lighter colour, maybe the white, but with the black. I've just done those with the black biro, as I've said, because I don't know if a fine liner would work on this slightly shiny paper. This one is slightly less shiny because the book was older. But yeah, that is the technique I used to do this background. So hopefully that's been interesting and kind of informative for people and a technique that you could maybe think about using in your books where you have uh, pictures with the frame, where, the, where you think it would be easy to cut out along the outside, not so fiddly. Hopefully you've enjoyed following along today, seeing how I cope with making this technique work for a background. If you have enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing. Take care everyone, and I'll see you in future videos. Bye!